I'm Kathy from the White Pigeon Library. I'm going to be reviewing Methland today. It's called Methland, The Death and Life of an American Small Town. And it's nonfiction, it's written by a journalist. So sometimes he goes off on tangents. It's not really like a novel, but he really researched this. And he discusses the socioeconomic beginnings of the meth epidemic that happened from about the late 90s into the mid 2000, 2005, 2006, and how the ability to make meth easily and cheaply sort of coincided with businesses moving out of the Midwest. A lot of businesses were taken over by bigger businesses, and um, especially in you know food industry and um, they overnight cut people's wages by two thirds. So a lot of people in these small towns were making enough to live on and then they were making $6 an hour. And that doesn't work without benefits. And that happened all over the Midwest and a lot of people decided that it made more sense to make meth since it was easy and cheap. And meth has been around forever. Pharmaceutical meth was used in World War II so that Pilots could keep flying long after they should not be flying to keep soldiers awake. Um, it was used by Germany to do these forced marches that were sort of phenomenal, and, but everybody was on meth, so it made it a little easier to keep going. And they stopped prescribing meth. Meth during the 70s was prescribed for everything down to from, you know, sleeping too much, to being nervous, to being depressed, everything. But the meth that they produce now, in when they were producing it um, in basements was a lot more pure and um, stronger than pharmaceutical meth that they call Benzedrine. And he just, he maps the history of it and he talks about the DEA agent that wanted to put some restrictions on one of the ingredients and he was fighting big pharmaceutical companies and they didn't want any kind of supervision. So for years and years, it, this meth kept destroying small towns all over the country and big towns. And all I really needed to do was have the pharmaceutical companies switch to another ingredient, which is how they stopped it eventually. Eventually they were forced to switch to another ingredient. They had the ingredient, it was easy. So now that's why we saw the end of the methamphetamine um, addictions and all kinds of things causing problems with families. And apparently he um, documents a lot of crimes that were committed because the people were on meth and they were hallucinating and they're pretty horrific. Um, but that's, that's, that's the only explanation they have for it. And it's just interesting to see him to go back to the history and go all the way through and the cartels. And I noticed that they are doing a, I guess it's Netflix, something called The Queen of Meth. And he wrote about her in the book when she was um, in the Midwest and she managed to put the whole thing together and create more of a corporation than just having people, you know, cooking in their basements. But it became a very organized corporate thing. And um, it's over now, I guess. Um, other things opiates have taken its place because like I said the one ingredient that could have been changed years and years ago finally was changed and in Congress they passed a bill that said that they would have oversight and the ingredient wouldn't be available anymore so I thought it was fascinating and you know it also talks about why small-town America is you know going under and apparently they still are so I think it's very interesting Methland. Nick Redding, um, fun read.